This is the uh, continuing uh, clip on how to apply for a K-1 fiancé visa to fill out Form uh, I-129F. Uh, we already covered uh, the eligibility requirements and now we're going to talk about some of the different forms and documents that are uh, needed for the application. First, the legalese. I am not an attorney nor uh, an employee or agent of the US government. So if you need official advice or if you need legal advice please go to the appropriate government agency or go to a licensed attorney. The application package you will be uh, putting together and submitting to the government uh, includes two uh, required forms. Uh, these can be downloaded from uh, the USCS.gov or from FiancéVisaServices.com where there are, there are copies. Uh, you can open these files using Adobe Reader and if you don't have Adobe Reader you can obtain it at Adobe.com. Uh, the G325A biographical background form is required for each person so the sponsor will fill out one and the the fiance another and basically it's asking for basic information about your your background uh, where you live where you've lived how many times you've been married etc uh, one thing that is special about these forms is that they require an original signature it cannot be like a Xerox copy of a signature or a fax signature so uh, this form the 325a should be completed and then sent to your fiance for her actual original signature to be uh, attached to it. Uh, second form is the I-129F form which actually is the name of the package you'll be submitting to get the fiance visa. And this form basically again asks some of the same questions about a fiance sponsor, their background, and some questions about how you met and uh, what your situations are. Along with the uh, government forms that you filled out and you'll be sending uh, in, uh, you need to attach some supporting documents. And the basic ones that are always required are, first of all, the sponsor must identify himself either by uh, a copy of his passport or birth certificate. Uh, in the case of the fiancé, she needs both passport and her birth certificate. Uh, both spouse, uh, both a sponsor and fiance uh, should submit two uh, passport type photos each. Uh, finally, if uh, anyone has been uh, previously married, we, you should present a copy of a divorce or death certificate or whatever is appropriate. If your fiance uh, has documentation, say the birth certificate or you know other certificates that are written in a foreign language, uh, then you will need what's called a certified translation. Uh, that is, certified means an official translator whose job it is to translate will translate the document and then sign a statement saying that he is a an official and authorized translator and that this is a a good copy. Uh, usually what happens is that if you're overseas uh, you just go to the nearest uh, US Embassy or Consulate and, and they will recommend uh, who does the certified translations and it can be done quite quickly. There will be one more uh, final clip and uh, this one talks about the documents that are not required but that are optional and which we greatly recommend. And when you use them combined with uh, putting together a very clean package will help your petition be uh, speedily uh, processed and hopefully accepted. If you need some uh, additional uh, assistance, uh, please visit one of our websites fiancevisaservices.com uh, is where we provide uh, copies of forms and also uh, provide preparation services to help people who want to have it done professionally. 
fianceVisaSecrets.com uh, is where I've published, I've written and published uh, an ebook that guides you step by step uh, through the process, and it really is a, a valuable resource. Finally, if you do not have a fiance yet, go to uh, heartofasiaonline.com where there's a number of people that may be attractive to you.